In this video, we're going to be doing some testing. And in order to do that, we need to make some changes to our directory structure. So inside my Mr. Terry H folder, which will probably be named different for you, I'm going to go into the framework folder and I'm going to create two folders, one called source, which is named SRC for short, and one called tests. And then we're going to drag these two folders that we've already been working on into the source folder. Okay, so now that's done, we need to just update this PSR for autoloading. And then in our VM, we need to run composer dump autoload. Perfect. So now let's just check we didn't break anything, which we didn't. Great. So the next thing that we need to do is install the PHP units command. Now, inside our VM, if I run PHP unit, I get the list of commands uh, as you'd expect, but you probably won't because it probably isn't installed for you. Uh, all you need to do is go to phpunit.de forward slash getting started .html, and that link will be in the description. And once you're here, you just need to follow these steps and everything will be working fine. Okay, so now we've done that, we can actually get on with the video. Now, a lot of you watching this will probably already know that uh, dependency injection is pretty much the way to go. The only issue with it is, is that if you're working on a large project like we are, and let's say you have 200 different classes, all requiring uh, various dependencies, what if, say, you want to update the dependency of a single class? Well, your code is going to break unless you go through all of your existing files, looking for every instantiation of that class and updating the actual dependency, which is going to be a nightmare, let's face it. So the way that we remedy this is by using an inversion of control container, or IOC for short. And Laravel has a really powerful one. And what I've done is I've tried to replicate the functionality of it without actually looking at the source code. So enough of the talking, let's get some coding done. So inside our source folder, we're going to create a new folder, a new file, sorry, inside a uh, core. And this is going to be called container. We're going to namespace it, uh, core, sorry, framework core. And we're going to create the class container. So that's all we need to worry about for now. What we need to do uh, in the meantime is create a test for it. Now, those of you who have already been studying unit testing will know that it's best practice to keep uh, your source folder and your tests folder symmetrical. In other words, if our container file is in the core folder, in our source folder, we need to do the same inside our tests directory. So we'll create a new folder called core, and inside here, we'll create a new file called container test.php. So we don't need to namespace this, we just need to create a class called container test, and it's going to extend PHP unit framework test case. Perfect. So let's just create a really quick uh, nonsense test, test something, and we're going to return this assert true, true. So we know that this is going to pass. Uh, inside our VM, we're going to run PHP unit vendor Mr. Terry H. Uh, framework, framework, tests, core, container, test. Hit enter, and actually, let's just apply colors to this, just to make things a bit more readable. So php unit dash dash colors, and to make this a bit easier, you might want to look at creating a php unit XML file, which we may be looking at in the future, but for now, this will work fine. And perfect, we get one test and one assertion. So let's get rid of that. What we actually want to do is create a setup method. And all we're going to do is create a new container instance. So this container equals new framework core container. And we'll create that uh, property up here. Now we're actually going to get an error if we run this because we haven't actually included this file. So to remedy this, what we're going to do is require uh, the 
and then we're going to jump back a couple of directories and then we're going to require vendor auto load and I've probably got that wrong but let's test it yes I have okay so let's jump back another one and great okay that's fine so now let's just create a quick test test container is container this is pretty pointless but just to give you a rough idea of what we're trying to accomplish so what we're going to do is say this assert instance of and what we need to do for our first parameter is provide the full class name that includes the namespace so framework call container and then we pass in the actual object okay so let's give this a whirl we'll run that and okay still didn't work let's try this instead now this is actually not very good practice uh, but we'll fix that later for now let's just get this working let's try one more time okay so it looks like we've got two different versions running so if we run php unit version okay so we're running 4.3.5 and in our files we're running 4.1. star so let's update that to 4.3 and we'll run composer update okay now that's done let's try this test one final time and perfect we get green now we can continue uh, with the rest of the testing okay so that test was pretty pointless so let's get rid of that for now and we're going to write some actual tests now so the way that the container works is we're going to allow ourselves to bind objects object to the container so before we actually create the bind method we need to test that it works so public function test binding object works and all we're going to do is say this container bind and we're going to bind foo to bar and then what we're going to do is return this assert equals bar this container gets binding foo now obviously if we run this we're going to get errors galore call to undefined method uh, so let's fix that we're going to say public function bind we're going to take key key value we're also going to say public function get binding and we're going to take a key and we'll also create a bindings object which will be an array now these undefined method uh, errors are going to disappear now but we're still going to get an error well not an error we're going to get a failure because this method here isn't returning what we're expecting so let's actually add the functionality now so in this bind method all we're going to do is set this bindings key equals to value and in this all we're going to do is return this bindings key and I also want to just do a quick check to make sure that the binding exists so we're just going to say here if not array key exists key this bindings we're going to return null okay so let's try that test again and we're getting a pass so for the sake of drilling this into our heads let's make sure that this returns null uh, when we try to uh, retrieve a non-existing binding so public function test uh, what should we call this returns null when binding not found so we're not going to bind anything like we did here all we're going to do is assert null uh, this container get binding and we'll call it bar so let's run that and now we're getting two tests and two assertions perfect so obviously the main purpose of the container is to resolve uh, objects in other words uh, instantiate a class so let's create a new test called test resolve a class returns object and to do this we're going to create two uh, kind of fake classes so we're going to have class foo and class bar now inside bar we're going to create a dependency 
So public function construct, and we're going to take this foo class that we just created. Now in this class, we're going to say this container bind uh, bar to bar. And in fact, we don't actually have to do that because the container, once we've actually coded it, will be smart enough to uh, know that that is a class. So all we need to do is assert instance of. This takes two parameters. Parameter one is the expected object or the name of the expected object, which in this case is bar. And the second parameter is the actual object that we're testing. So let's assign that to object and we'll say object equals this container resolve bar and we'll capitalize that B and just here we're going to make a quick change just to increase readability like so so let's make sure this works we know it isn't going to work until we've actually coded it undefined method resolve okay so let's fix that public function resolve uh, key and we're also going to accept arguments so array args except this is going to be optional so we'll set that to an array by default and for now let's just echo key so let's run this test we're going to get a fail uh, but somewhere there should be key here we go so we're getting that bar that we passed through in our test so this is the complicated part the first thing that we want to do is determine whether the binding exists and if it does we want to actually use the binding so the first thing that we want to do here is check if a binding exists and if it doesn't we're just going to use the key that the uh, well the developer passed through because in this case we're actually passing through the name of the class not the uh, binding if that makes sense so we're going to say binding equals this get binding key and actually we'll rename that to class so class equals this get binding key and if class equals null we're just going to set class to key okay so now what we need to do is build the class in other words we need to create a reflection class and check whether the class has a constructor if it does we're going to go through all of the constructor uh, dependencies and resolve each one of them recursively if that didn't make any sense apologies but don't worry we're going to be demonstrating it now so instead of make one long resolve method we're going to say return this build object and we're going to pass in the class name uh, we're going to change this up a little bit later on but for now we're going to keep things as minimal as possible so public function build object and let's just change the visibility to protected since no outside class is going to be uh, accessing this so build object class name and we're also going to take the args so we'll pass those through as well so in here the first thing that we want to do is create a reflection class so we'll say reflector equals new reflection class class name and we need to uh, use reflection class because it's not in the framework called namespace and once that's done we need to make a quick check if we pass through the name of an interface here we can't exactly check the constructor for dependencies because an, an interface doesn't have dependencies obviously so we're going to just check that the, the class is instantiable reflection class makes this really easy so reflector so if reflector is instantiable and i hope i spelled that right no that's a t uh, if it isn't instantiable we're going to throw an exception and let's just create that exception now uh, what should we call this class is not instantiable exception PHP create that quickly uh, namespace framework framework core class class is not instantiable exception 
and that's going to extend the default PHP exception. So we can get rid of that now. So if the reflector is not instantiable, we're going to throw new class is not instantiable exception. And we're just going to put in a quick message class class name is not a resolvable dependency. Okay, so once we've done that, what we want to do is resolve the dependencies in the constructor. But before we do that, we need to check that the uh, the class actually has a constructor. So again, reflection class makes this really simple for us. What we're going to do is say if uh, reflector get constructor does not equal null, and inside here is where we're going to put all of our uh, logic. First thing we're going to do is get the constructor and assign it to a variable. Uh, so constructor equals reflector get constructor. Then we're going to say dependencies equals constructor get parameters. Parameters. Now what we're going to do is loop through these dependencies. So for each dependencies as dependency. And for now, let's just echo the, the name of it. So let's run this test. Okay, we're getting an error. Class bar is not a resolv resolvable dependency. So that's this here. Oh, this should be if reflector is not instantiable. So let's try again. And what's the problem now? Oh, okay. Uh, let's just comment that out for now. Try one more time. And there we go. Parameter zero. Foo. Foo. Which is this. Perfect. So let's just clear that. The first couple of things we have to do is check whether the dependency is optional. So that's really simple. If dependency is optional, then continue with the loop. We also want to make sure that the dependency is not an array. So if dependency is array, continue. So if we got this far, then the dependency needs to be resolved and injected into the object. So the first thing to do is get the class name. So class equals dependency get class. And that will work fine, except for one thing. The problem now is that uh, the dependency could exist but it might not be a class. It might just be something like name and it doesn't have a type int in front of it. So if that's the case, we can't do anything about it. So we'll just say if class equals null, continue. And we'll triple equal that. The next thing that we need to do is check if the, um, if the class is requesting an instance of this container class. So if get class this equals class name, then we're just going to pass in using array on shift uh, to args this, and then we'll continue with the loop. So otherwise, we're just going to array on shift onto the args array. Uh, well, the class, but we need to resolve it obvious, obviously. So this resolve resolve class name. And once that's all done, uh, we can just say object equals reflector new instance args, pass in the arguments, and then return object. If you're not familiar with the uh, reflection class, all this does is it creates a new instance of the class passing in the arguments uh, provided. So let's uncomment this line and hope for the best. And miraculously, somehow this worked first time. Now, the last thing that I want to do before we wrap up this lesson is in my application class, I want to inherit that container. So let's just make sure that we haven't broken anything in the browser. Hit refresh and perfect. 